So we could play like gemstone mine into bog, stack the bog targeting them, and then okay, well never mind. Never mind. Plan ruined. Day ruined. Life ruined. It's over. We are almost out of counters on our gemstone mine. Next time we tap it for a mana, it will be gone. Hello and welcome, guys. Today we are in for something special because we are doing all kinds of wacky stuff with this list. I have a couple of people that I'm going to shout out this list's origin to, but before I get into that, I just want to let you know we are playing Hive Mind and Chalice of the Void and a third Talari West and four Gemstone Mines in this list. We are doing some very experimental stuff here, and that's the plan for today. Of course, I didn't think of this all on my own. Some of the thinking was my own, but I do want to shout out Toramond, one of the commenters on the YouTube channel here, and among discussing various things about the Learn Amulet deck that we played last time, there was also a discussion on using Kazandu Mammoth, potentially, as a pack target, so you can pack for a land source. Also, playing a third Tolari West, rather than playing two, and uh, I'm able to incorporate that suggestion here, so thank you, Toramond, for that. And also, user Mask V mentioned playing Hive Mind in Amulet, and this is not one that I've ever played before, so I'm excited to give it a shot. Also, I should shout out Yuso Onitz. I did look at Yuso Onitz's Hive Mind Amulet list to get an idea of the kinds of things that Yuso was doing, and we do see some similarities here with the many copies of Gemstone Mine, but also some stark differences. For example, Monitz decided to go with a heavy dismember and slaughter pact splash here, splashing black instead of white, playing only Boros Garrison for the Stronghold and Sun Home package. I suppose also Vesuva, but no, um, no Slesnia Sanctuaries or Gruel Turfs. That's not something that I really wanted to try. And also, this list is playing Tri Scout. We're playing Grazer, so some slight differences here, especially in the sideboard as well. But uh, this is kind of part of the jumping off point. I also made reference to this article by Channel Fireball. This is from 2015, so a bit of a blast from the past year, back when Summer Bloom was still legal. This is before Field of the Dead, before Dry to the Elysian Grove, and even before the card Summer Bloom was banned. Two mana play up to three additional lands. Obviously, you go turn one amulet, turn two, bounce sand, summer bloom, bounce sand, bounce on, bounce sand, titan. And uh, that's no longer a thing that we can do, so no more turn twos here. But this is the origins of the hive mind in amulet titan. The original summer bloom lists played three hive minds, and along with four seer envisions, they were able to pretty consistently set up either the titan thing, the summer bloom thing, or being able to hive mind. So let's jump into the deck list here. And I will explain some of what I'm talking about here. So first of all, what the heck is Hive Mind? For those of you not familiar, Hive Mind is a six mana enchantment. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, each other player copies that spell. Each of those players may choose new targets for their copy. So the first thing to note is this is not a may ability. It is a must ability. Each other player copies that spell. They do it. Which is extremely potent when combined with cards like Summoner's Pact. The alternate line of text here at the bottom here is, at the beginning of your next upkeep, pay two green green if you don't lose the game. Well, guess what? If we cast a Summoner's Pact with a Hive Mind in play, then our opponent casts a Summoner's Pact. And if our opponent just doesn't happen to be playing green, they can't pay, and they're going to lose on their upkeep. Just straight up. That's just how it works. Even if they can pay green mana, they will also have to have four mana open, tap out that turn, and so even without just killing your opponent with the Hive Mind combo, which is obviously what we're trying to do here with the Summoner's Pact, Slaughter's Pact, and Pact of Negation here in the main board, we can still get some value out of Hive Mind. Not to mention that if we play Hive Mind against Control, then we can copy their Cryptic Commands to counter their Cryptic Commands so that they can't fight back over the stack. Um, most counter spells are going to work kind of similarly to that. And uh, we can always copy things like Serum Visions, you know, discard spells against other decks. So Hive Mind has a little bit of utility here, but mainly it is just going to be a combo piece. And it is, in fact, a six mana blue enchantment. So instead of ramping to Titan, sometimes we can ramp to a Hive Mind and then cast the pack and just win. At least that's the idea. And in order to support this, we've gone for a heavy blue splash. We do have two copies of Breeding Pool. We have two Windswept Heaths to fetch them up. We have four Gemstone Mines. Once a all-star in the deck, a snap four of, now we, we barely even see one Gemstone Mine, and today we get to play a full four copies of it. 
blast from the past. Like I said, I'm excited for this because I love Gemstone Mine, and it's a shame, in my opinion, that we don't get to play any in the current deck lists. This is going to be a land that enters with three counters on it, and you can tap the Gemstone Mine and remove a counter on it to make a mana of any color. And when there are no counters left on the Gemstone Mine, you're forced to sacrifice it. But obviously, you use this twice, leave one counter on it, pick it up with a bounce land, boom, you get to reuse it. It's a painless, hassle-free, into the battlefield, untapped, rainbow, mana-colored source. And that is just as good as it may sound. So, in this list, we're playing, obviously, for Growth Chamber. We are playing that third Talari West, as I mentioned. Two copies of Castle Garenbrig, specifically for the purpose of having, along with Azusa and a Bounce Land and Amulet, to be able to turn three a Primeval Titan. I also want to give a shout-out to a fan that I happened to meet in person at FNM the other night, Keegan. Keegan mentioned that Chalice of the Void is something that he's been trying in the sideboard, specifically for the Prowess matchup. Put it on one, and these Lava Spikes and Lava Darts and Lightning Bolts get out of my face. Get rid of them. Don't want them. I guess they could still trigger Prowess this way, but we still have things like Dismember and Explosives, and even in, and Explosives in the main board to be able to deal with their creatures. So just locking them out of the game with Chalice seems pretty nice. Plus, against opposing decks that are doing extremely unfair things like Living End or Restore Balance, just transmute for Chalice, plop it out on zero, and watch your opponent squirm because they need to answer the Chalice or they can't do their Restore Balance or Living End thing. So there are some upsides to playing Chalice. It's also a way to answer Aether Gust, believe it or not. We can just drop this one on two. Sort of how you would play Karn as an intermediary threat for four mana. Drop a Chalice on two. If they don't counter it, then they no longer have access to a Remand, Mana Leak, Aether Gust, Snapcaster Mage, all kinds of things like that. You could play it on one to get rid of your opponent's Path to Exiles, Fatal Pushes, Discard Spells, that kind of stuff. This is not one I've ever played either, and we're trying it out in the sideboard. And like I mentioned, it is in fact a Talario West tutor target, so... What better way to play Chalice than in a list with three Talari West so we can very conveniently transmute for it? So, of course, we're playing a Ghost Quarter in the 75. Got punished last league for not playing one. Before I move on, there's one more thing I want to mention. The very important Swan Song. One mana instant. Counter target enchantment instant or sorcery spell. Its controller creates a 2-2 blue bird with flying. Swan Song has the word enchantment on it, which is very intriguing as today's best combo deck, best meta deck, is the Heliod combo deck. And I noticed this one in the sideboard of some really old lists going back. We can counter Blood Moon, we can counter Heliod, we can counter Collected Company, we can counter Instant Speed Interaction like Aether Gust. We do give our opponent a 2-2 bird, but uh, perhaps we'll be able to make up for it by just killing them on the spot the turn after with Hive Mind. I don't know. We'll see. This list is extremely experimental, so I have no clue how this is going to go. We're playing this mainly for fun, and with that said, I will see you guys in the first match of the league here. All right, let's hop into this match here. I've never resolved a copy of Hive Mind in my whole life, so we'll see how that goes. And we see a hand of Lands Packed Titan. I feel like we can do better on six. We have a turn two Dryad and a Talari West Transmute, so I think we're keeping this one for sure. Could bottom a redundant Bounce Land, but we can also just leave a Bounce Land in play and be fine, so I'm kind of inclined to bottom the Sun Home here. If we go turn one Forest, turn two Growth Chamber Dryad, pick up the Forest, and then play Talari West, we can play turn three Sanctuary, pick up the Talari West and Transmute it, perhaps. So, yeah, I'm okay with getting rid of the Sun Home. We can also just top-tack into the land, so... All right, let's lead on our turn one amulet. This is looking like a very normal amulet hand, I must say. Not complaining. That is, of course, the nice thing about doing new things in the amulet is you always have the default of just turn three titan win. No big deal. Speaking of turn three titan win, if we happen to top deck a titan, then we'll be in great shape. We do see our opponent on Shriekhorn over here, so playing in some dredge. And there's our titan. <laughs> well, I can't say I did not warn you I apologize for some of the background noise, by the way. If it occurs while I'm speaking, I cannot edit it out, sadly. So we'll go ahead and play out our T-West here and just pass it back. Our opponent has milled over a loam with their Shriekhorn, but they're going looking again, trying to find, I guess, a Stinkweed Imp. See if they dredge the loam, they do. They have Amalgam in the yard, Silver Smoke Ghoul. One that I personally don't prefer over something like Blood Gas. They have the Thrilling Discovery as well, so that's pretty good for them. 
and they have two dredgers, and neither of them is loam. Interesting. They didn't pitch the loam that they picked up. That's fine, though. Creeping chill. That's cool. And uh, are they just passing back here? Because, uh, okay, no, they get to get the ghoul back and trigger some amalgams, but we can exile these amalgams and the ghoul as well by hitting it with a Valcat trigger. So I think our opponent's probably just dead here. We do have Bog in the main. I'm trying to think if there's anything special we want to do here. If we go Force into Castle, we'll be able to trigger Valakut immediately, but we would have to get Crumbling Vestige, I suppose. It probably doesn't matter. We can get Crumbling Vestige and something else and keep our lands in play. We don't even have to get Crumbling Vestige, now I'm thinking about it. We're probably just overthinking this. This Bog is about to win us the game, so... Don't... There we go. This Titan's about to win us the game. Opponent doesn't even want to see the main board bog. Chalice of the Void, probably not doing its best against Dredge. Swansong countering a Cathartic or something like that actually could be quite good, so I think Swansong could be good in this matchup. Yeah, I think that's about it. I don't think our opponent is playing Blood Moon or Mages of the Moon, thanks to the fact that they're splashing white for the uh, new one, Thrilling Discovery, so don't need to worry about that. Usually I would just hit Submit, but Swan Song actually seems like it could be promising in this matchup, so we'll bring in that one. Tick out a Slaughter Pact. Don't see it being super useful. Most of the creatures that come back from the yard, other than Narc Amoeba, are black anyways. Maybe Cavern. I mean, it's an untapped source for Grazer, so I don't mind it. Hive Mind probably just wins the game on the spot against them, I would think, so... Might be able to get a hive mind victory here as well as just the normal Titan thing. I guess we don't need this main board explosives. Sure. We'll trim the explosives and pass it back. And by that I mean jump into the match here for <laughs> game two. Yeah, we'll just pass it back to them, you know. Here's our hive mind, but uh, no ramp whatsoever. Natural Bajuka Bog is actually pretty enticing though. Alright, I'm gonna keep it because it has Bajuka Bog in the hand. We might end up losing our gemstone mines because we have to tap them for mana, so let's hope we can avoid that, but. Maybe just being able to play out a bog here will be good enough against our opponent. Let's go ahead and play out the Heath so we can fetch for a blue source. See if our opponent has the turn two. Conflagrate? Not conflagrate. Uh, cathartic? That's what I'm trying to think of. They just do nothing. All right, they're, they're being very patient. Bounce land, okay, I guess we're just playing a Garenbring and passing it back. I'm not opposed to packing for a Dryad or Azusa and then playing Bog afterwards. Like, jumps on Mine, Dryad, then Bog. I can see that. My opponent's fetching all the tap lands. They're playing it at uber slow. They're playing around the natural Bajuka Bog, I guess. Life from the Loam, okay, you got it. Play land, pass it back, okay, sure. I mean, this hand really likes our opponent doing nothing thanks to the hive mind that we've got here. I think it's probably correct to just pack for and slam a dryad here anyways, though. I mean, we won't have something to win with hive mind, but I don't think we need it, to be honest. Don't really want to play out our bog just yet. Probably just going gemstone mine into the Valkut. Then we won't even lose to something like a cleansing wildfire, which I don't think our opponent have would have. They could potentially have something like Fulminator, but I'm not really playing around it, I don't think. I'm not playing around Blood Moon either. Let's just go ahead and go for the Pact. Just do something now. Also, it's very nice that with uh, Dryad in the deck, we can now use the Gemstone Mine for the Dryad ability to tap for a mana of any color, so we don't have to remove counters from it. So that's nice. That's a thing that occurs. Not going to bog our opponent just yet. This is just not juicy enough of value. If they just go off this turn, that's fine. We even get a single Valka trigger this upcoming turn. So we could play, like, Gemstone Mine into Bog, stack the Bog targeting them, and then... Okay, well, never mind. Never mind. Plant ruined. Day ruined. Life ruined. It's over. Our opponent has an Ox, but not enough cards to escape it. This one requires eight cards. I mean, they could have some things to do here. Wouldn't be surprised. They have done nothing so far, so if they had nothing, I would be very surprised. All the expeditions on our opponent's mana base are pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. 
They cast a loam, okay. Well, I think I'm about ready to go ahead and bog them, in all honesty, so... We are almost out of counters on our gemstone mine. Next time we tap it for a mana, it will be gone. So, yeah. All right, let's bog them. This upcoming turn, if we draw... Actually, I guess they can pay for a pack, potentially. No, they can't. They don't have enough green. So, this upcoming turn, if we draw a summoner's pack, we can just hive mine and kill them on the spot. We play out a ghoul, that's fine. Fetch. Okay, so now a pack does not kill them. But a titan probably does, and we lose our jumps on mine, but that feels worth it to me. Actually, we don't even have to lose the mine, because we can leave it untapped and just play another land and tap that instead, so... I don't see a reason why not to just go ahead and do this and keep a mine in play. We'll play our titan out here. Don't really know what our opponent's doing over there. I'm a little confused. Our opponent scoops it up. All right, well, I'll take that too, I guess. <laughs> well, it's always very awkward to win against Dredge in a match where I'm trying to show off the cards because Dredge is just such a good matchup. It's really hard to lose, <laughs> to be honest. Like, we didn't even get Valkyrie triggers there. We had the natural bog, I guess, which is pretty good. Um, we almost had a hive mind kill. We were pretty close to that. But um, anyways, hopefully we'll play against something where we can show off a bit of our cards here in round two. Of course, I'm not complaining. I'll never complain that we got the win, as I'm thankful enough to be getting wins in the first place. Let me know what you think about this deck list, what your experience is with the card Hive Mind. Did you play Amulet back when Summer Bloom was legal? Let me know. I definitely did not. In fact, I was one of the people on the other side of the table not knowing what the heck was going on, and honestly, Amulet made me salt off a little bit. I was playing Control at the time, and my opponent would always just have turn one amulet, turn two, bounce and summer bloom, and it was like, you had to have a spell snare immediately, or you were just dead. That happened to me several times at, in local events, and uh, I actually initially really disliked the amulet because of it, but um, I mean, here I am playing it, so who knows what can happen in this world. And with that said, I will see you guys for match two. This is Redface Menace, signing off.